someone was being murdered, it was that loud. Oh shit, something just walked oh, in. Oh my god, did you see that? Come on, get right up here. Right, right there. State institutions were the mentally retarded. I need somebody up here. You're fine. I'm up here. Holy shit, what the hell was that? Wait. And forget them while they decay from the earth. Shortly after its closure, reports of strange paranormal activity would begin to surface, leaving several staff members and volunteers speechless. <laughs> Oh my god. What is it? Stop. 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 What did you see that? Oh my, oh my god. Doesn't this degrade the person who is being disciplined to the point that he may regress? I doubt it very much. Uh, actually, what we're trying to do is, uh, is degrade him to a certain extent amongst his uh, uh, fellows here. Uh, they uh, make fun of them then for a while afterwards, but uh, I don't think there's anything inhumane about it or anything of that sort. I didn't believe in ghosts at all until I stepped foot in this building. What would you like? If I can give you anything I could in the world, what would you want? Uh, I'd like to get out of Penhurst. If you can have anything in the world, what would you want? But I'd like to have... But I'll tell you this, well, I have a little bit of money myself, like. Would you rather have money or would you rather leave Penhurst? I'd rather leave Penhurst. <laughs> Even if you didn't have any money? That's right. Do the people outside love you? Do they care about you? Well, I haven't been around them to, been, not been around them enough to, to, to see that. But do you think they care about you? Uh, I think so. Who cares about you? None of my parents don't care for me. How about other people? The other people, they don't care for you, so just go look for trouble, that's all. Do you know how long you've, you've been here, Joe? That you remember? I was... I was 19 when I first came back. So how old are you now, Joe? 20. You want to go home? Yeah, I'd like to. Who's going to take you home? Nobody. Why, Joe? They don't want me to. You mean the people don't want you to go home with them? You mean your mother and father? My mother's in Lovington, Virginia, Oslo. I can't go down there and see her. Uh -huh. How about your daddy? No. He doesn't want you. Who loves you the most, Joe? My mother. Yeah? Who else? My father. Who cares about you? Um... My, um, Does anyone ever come and visit you, Joe? No, they don't. Would you like somebody to visit you? Yes. What would you like most in the whole world? Um, uh, yeah. A what? What would you like most in the whole world? The whole world? Mm hmm. Oh, my God. The social indifference stresses the hangover of 19th century philosophy, which condemns the mentally retarded to a bare existence in facilities like Penhurst. These children can be helped, and they are depending on society to care enough about them. It's not good, then it's shameful, because this rich country, this great country, and I must say it is very great and very rich, can afford to take care of the least of these. The man in charge bitterly complained to the state that the conditions were already overcrowded. He transferred many of the patients to Q1, a classroom building. Multiple things that have happened here that are proven facts were the atrocities of sexual, physical, and 
mental abuse. You know, it, it just, it, it obviously was a really bad situation. Hearst was first opened 60 years ago when the answers to the problem of mental retardation were considered to be segregation and sterilization. Many of the children are victims of neglect of their own family, and in many instances... In many instances, it's almost understandable. Almost understandable. Who cares about it? Um, who cares about it? Their own family. Who cares about it? Withering for quite a while. Of course, rest of living. Who cares about it? And uh, went around the corner, started walking up the stairs, and something ran right into the back of me, and I fell flat on my face. Oh. And her stays in the hospital. And her stays in the hospital. Did you freaking see that? Shackled like prisoners, punished because they cannot control themselves in their own. All of the patients in her house are not hopeless idiots or mangled cripples. Many of them walk and talk but lack the opportunity to progress. We're not here to harm you, provoke anybody. We're housing, some of them were schools, some of them had other things that you had, some of them uh, housed employees. But uh, Philadelphia was mostly a school. But uh, we'll take you for a walk. There are only nine MDs and two psychiatrists working at the institution on a full time basis. They are responsible for 2,800 sick children. His name's Johnny. They covered his eyes one day. As the type of work that I do, I'm called into a facility to read the building. You may have been handicapped in life, but now that you've moved on, you don't have those handicaps, those handcuffs, those chains. Um, I had never been here before, and as soon as I crossed the threshold, I was immediately rushed by energy children. Kept you from being part of society. Now you can do what you want to do. Just so you guys know, we are in complete darkness right now. We are night vision on, we cannot see anything. Pennhurst um, opened its doors in 1908 after being commissioned in 1904. It went through different phases and the buildings changed from year to year as far as the population and the overcrowding came into place. Can you imagine being in this building with this being this dark? Somewhere around 1968, Bill Baldini came in and did a piece on it, which was called Suffer the Little Children. These are some of the sights and sounds of Pennhurst, the state institution for the mentally retarded. It's located in Spring City, Chester County. The only room in the Mayflower building that's got the padded room for sound. And if you look over here, it's busted out now because of vandals. But there used to be a double-sided mirror. So, you know, they can see what was going on in the room and then you couldn't see it display the overcrowding and atrocities that happen to the patients. Actually, what we're trying to do is, uh, is degrade him to a certain extent amongst his uh, uh, fellows here. It wasn't always like that. They, they changed as, as the times changed, as the overcrowding changed, as conditions changed. These buildings all changed with it. Now, we're not here to harm you, provoke anybody. We know you've had people in here that's provoked, that was mean to you. We're just here to talk with you. The reality of it was is that most people look at it as Mayflower being really rough. My guess is that they really went unwatched yeah, quite at night. It just feels like something's gonna freaking run out and grab you and drag you into the darkness. I'll never see you again. Let's go back here to the pool. And there's a path that leads down in there. A couple, see if we can get a couple full shots down there. Okay. You got buildings as far as you can see that way. You got buildings that way. 
turn around, you got more buildings all around here. I mean, it's just building after building. It's amazing after all these years that they're still here. They have been abandoned and placed at the mercy of the state. In the case of Penhurst, the state has failed to do its moral duty. Oh, it's what? So this area right back in here, this was the waiting pool where all the patients were brought down here and they would do therapy. Johnny, can you talk? Yes. Do you like to hear it, No, no, no. As you can see, the trees and everything's kind of overgrown the pool. And... So they punish you and put you here? Yes. Do they do this all the time to you, John? Do you remember living anywhere except Penhurst? No. What was that? Did you just hear that? Like a knocking noise? I heard a whistle. Sounds like small light. We're up here in complete darkness. Came in, I opened up the door, I turned the alarm off. I walked into you know the first room on the left, kind of just set up shop, you know, put my paperwork down, and just kind of looking around. I went to go walk back outside, and I heard the loudest scream I've ever heard in my life. You know, to the point where I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go check what that was. <laughs> I closed the door, I went up to the gate, and just hung out up there. Mr. King, did we offend you when we were down here last time? Did you abuse children in here? That was freaking weird. But it sounded like it was like, almost like right beside me. That was weird as heck, that was pretty cool. It begins at Penhurst. That's the thing here, with all these buildings, you really need to just focus all your attention on one building at a time and you know not try to cram all these buildings into one investigation. I swear it looked like I seen something standing in there. On them steps. Did you get mad because Josh was talking about Mr. King? Do you want him to come up here? Knock on something loud for us right now. You hear that behind me? Mm -hmm. like There's something thing. directly behind me because I can feel it. You heard walking up there? Yeah. Yeah, like water Shh. running. Greg, was that behind you? Mm-hmm. Yes. What do you actually feel behind you, Greg, when before that noise? It just felt like, I don't know, just a lot of tension, like something was coming up behind me, then I heard a noise. I think the longer we're here, the more they're going to get comfortable with us and want to start pushing. Well, see, what was funny, Greg, he goes, I want to turn around, I want to face us. And then that's when we heard it. You know, this is the only place, you know, with the exception of a few places that I've ever been, where when you have your back turned, like right now to the darkness, it's, you just, Feel like something's gonna run up and freaking grab you. Let me ask you this, John. Do you remember living anywhere except Penhurst? No. Something's down here. I've seen a boy on the third floor come out of one of the rooms, kind of stop, look at us, and then ran into the next room. I ran down the hallway, see if I can catch him, and no one was in there. Do you like talking to the people up here? Yeah. Why, John? And they like to talk to me. Have you been talking more lately or less? Less. Why are you here in Q2, John? I did something well wasn't supposed to be doing. So they punished you and put you here? Yes. yes. Let this thing come to us.
or a loved one. It's gonna come to us. If it's that scared to run from us and can't come up and face us, then heck with it. Whoever's down here with us, we can hear you now. We've got a device that if you speak, we can hear you. Do you have a message that you want to give to a staff member or a loved one? Ouch. Man. In the basement, pitch dark, again, freezing cold. I was bundled up. Scarf hat, gloves, coat, and I was running a session, an EVP session, and all of a sudden I say, who are you? Tell me your name. And I get this feeling of fingers poking me in the rib cage. I don't know if I got pinched or it felt like a freaking needle or something. They said don't come to the basement and Ask for something you can't handle. I didn't call yeah, it out. Did. I just told it to come yeah, to the us. He called it out. We did. Juan, you want to take Sean on? Here he is. Take him on. Man. <laughs> I can still feel it like freaking poking or something. Or... If you ask to be touched, you will be touched. What you ask for in this building will happen. Did you hear that, Becca? Mm -hmm. I had literally been touched by this entity and this was a male figure, a very big, large man who dominated this entire area. If there's a different spirit besides Mr. King, please let us know you're down here. Penhurst has hundreds of spirits here. The men and I am even driving maybe a mile away from coming onto this campus. I just feel it. They're, they swarm me when I'm here. Um, it's so many of them. I would say at least 200 is what I've come across, if not more. I feel like a lot of the activity is what was going on back in the day. You know, I can see people on the walkway. They're, they're just everywhere. It just feels like something's gonna freaking run out and grab you and drag you into the darkness. I will never see you again. Mr. King, did we offend you when we were down here last time? I'm not one who's going to be like upstairs by myself as you guys are in the basement. I mean, I, I know who's there. Did you abuse children in here? We've got a baby right here. These kids came in here and they enjoyed toys like this. Right. Did you abuse children down here? Tell us now. It's like whenever you get aggressive, the thing gets aggressive. Tell us your name now. Tell us your name now. Tell us your name now. I did something well wasn't supposed to be doing. So they punished you and put you here. I had tried to get him into a Catholic organization. Uh, it turned out that his IQ wasn't quite high enough. Let me ask you this, John. Do you remember living anywhere except Penhurst? No. Chances are poorer here than they would be where they have a program set up for this type of case. There are too many Johnnies in Penhurst this very evening. Unless the state provides more competent personnel and facilities, they will remain just where they are stripped of their dignity, lost to society. We know you're in here, we can sense it. Can you throw us on that, Josh? No, don't do that. We're gonna leave the basement. You want us to leave? Ooh. Did you hear that? No. It goes no. He wants to leave. We're gonna leave. Is that okay with you? No, yeah. Is that what it's saying? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Please. I got cold chills. Yeah.
You guys hear any cold chills? Are you in this room with us right now? Hair on my back, please. Don't run. We'll run if we want to run. Do you need help? Help? Is there a little girl down here with us? About a little boy. An adult? Come on, man. We went into what I guess was a storage room. It was a wood framed uh, room with chicken wire as the walls. And we're standing in the middle of that room, and the whole, you know, those walls started just shaking like someone was shaking it on us. And that's when we decided it was probably a good time to get the hell out of there. Um, he will come right up to you in a threatening manner when you walk downstairs. He does it to me all the time. And when Nick was questioning him, I said, um, Nick said, what's your name? And I said, he just said, King. And Nick said, what the hell makes you the king? And he said, it's my domain. So that's his whole mindset down there. Um, not nice. <laughs> I'm not answering when we say stuff. No, stay behind me. Stay behind me. Stay behind me. What was wrong? What the fuck is it? Wait, stop, stop, stop. 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 What did you see that? Oh shit, there was nothing staying no. in there. Who's in there? Turn white. Did no. you freaking see that? Did you get on video? Well, I had to. I was freaking filming it. That's how I seen it. I haven't took my damn mind's office. Dude. There was somebody. Oh my god. Me. What is it? I am telling you, there was somebody fucking standing right freaking in front of me. Let's just go to No, I'm talking about the shadow. This other shadow. We already, we already told whoever's down here that they're not the balls. We're the balls. We run this basement. No more kids are going to be hurt. I can't see. So we're going to do what we want to do. Stop right here. You wanted us, here we are. Fact that they kept you locked in this chair, strapped down like an animal. I do recommend not overly provoking. It went right through the wall. We got a trash can right here. If you've got the energy to beat kids and be aggressive towards people that come in here to investigate, then move that trash can. Was that you? You can't see. You don't have to run from us. All the noise is off. It's complete silence. Right, six minutes. Now you can do something. Just nobody move. Do you hear that? Yeah, it's walking right behind you. Come up and touch me. How clear was it? I'll know when you seen that person standing there. That's where I seen somebody's <clears throat> freaking probably almost as tall as me. Well, what was the time on the tape? Did you hear that? What the hell? What the hell was that? There was, was that somebody's stomach or was that? No. I can't figure it out. There was a somebody coming down those fucking steps earlier. As soon as we walked in, it was freaking our story hearing footsteps out in the hall. So I figured maybe you can try to trick them and be like, hey, I see you. And actually he's down here behind me now that I don't know where he came from, but he was here last time and he's not friendly because there's, he. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. I haven't took my damn eyes off this. Us and she was explaining, you know, where he was, who he was, and we get down into the basement. And my partner was uh, provoking this uh, entity, spirit, whatever you want to call it. 
and we're quiet for a couple seconds and I asked if he can make another noise and next thing you know a crowbar gets picked up off the ground and thrown right in the middle of the group. The spirits that had worked here are not happy that we're here and they tend to be more authoritative, some of them extremely aggressive, some of them slightly dangerous. You know that's why I think a lot of times it's interesting the interaction you get paranormally in these places because it's not always a voice. Sometimes it is physical, but it doesn't mean they're trying to hurt you. It means that they didn't know how else to interact yeah, with you. That's the always touch. Yeah. And so you feel one. So you're pushing, you know, getting pushed almost down a stairwell doesn't mean they're trying to hurt you. Mm -hmm. It's trying to get your attention. I think that's why most of that shows up when you're a And then immediately pressure on my back and you could see me physically move forward that they were trying to get me back out of the building. Not scared, but like, did that really just happen? It was this feeling of, okay, we're welcoming you in, but now we want you to go. And I have never been touched personally in that manner, and it was broad daylight. We all witnessed a crowbar getting picked up and thrown across the room. You know, at that point, it really didn't matter to me that who this guy was. What mattered to me is how the hell did he just pick that up and throw that across the room? Most of that shows up when you're a scrum. Oh, shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Stop, stop, stop. Just stop. Was that you? My heart is racing. Holy shit. Go in here. We can't see you. I can't see what's even in this room. They get this feeling of dread. Something behind you. You get a feeling of you're being followed. What is your name? Three seconds later, Class A. Ralph. Can you tell us your name? But no doubt that they're here. Uh, there's too many experiences. Institutions are sometimes pitiful, just pitiful, disgraceful. And uh, we just can't tolerate that, John. It's not right. What would you like most in the whole world? The whole world? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Suffer children to come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. When was the last time you had a visitor here? 1940. 1940. They walked out on me. Who walked out on you, Gal? My sister did. The ones that speak detest the inhumane conditions and hunger for the slightest sign of affection. However, some of them have become so callous to their plight, they've all but given up. They are alone, alone in a world that seems to lack all compassion. Oh shit, something just walked oh, in there. Oh my god, did you see that? Come on, Look get up right here. The doorway. Right there. Right. Holy shit. Uh, holy god, that was awful. Stop right here. I'm gonna run into something so I can't see anything. Fine. I need somebody up here. You're fine. I'm up here. Holy shit, what the hell was that? I first heard the story of Pennhurst and what happened here and, and watched uh, Suffering the Little Children and saw what was going on. You know that if that doesn't touch your heart, I don't know what does. You know, the things that happen here are, it's extremely sad. You know, knowing that kids were dropped off here as, as babies, but their whole lives here without ever seeing their parents again. You know, growing up in an environment that was so hostile and so uncaring. That, that hurts your soul. It just hurts seeing such a, a beautiful location fall into such, such decay. I'm not only here just because of the paranormal, but just because I, I, this place feels like a home. You know, and every time I come back here, I feel like, I mean, it, it's weird to say, but I feel like I give something back. Penhurst was 
first opened 60 years ago when the answers to the problem of mental retardation were considered to be segregation and sterilization. Sterilization, of course, is a thing of the past, but the archaic practices of segregation and custodial care are still with us and seemingly with the approval of society. The 2,800 children, young and old alike, residing within the confines of Penhurst are for the most part protected from society and the granite wall of ignorance and social blindness protects society from them. These unfortunates are being deprived of their dignity and self-respect. Why? Because only a very, very few seem to care. No, the children, as they are all called, who are rotting in their cages, cribs and beds, can thank society for their dreadful plight. We have forsaken them, not in the sense of what we have done to them, but because of what we have failed to do on their behalf. They have been abandoned and placed at the mercy of the state. In the case of Penhurst, the state has failed to do its moral duty. Institutions are sometimes pitiful, just pitiful, disgraceful. And uh, we just can't tolerate that, John. It's not right. We just can't look ourselves in the mirror when you know what goes on in some of these institutions. I don't know about your particular problem here, but uh, let me tell you, if it's not good, then it's shameful. Because this rich country, this great country, and I must say it is very great and very rich, can afford to take care of the least of these. If I had my way, every building would be saved. I don't know that that's always the case, you know, and who's to say where it will be. But uh, as more and more money and, and exposure comes to the place, we're able to save a lot more. We're able to clean a lot more buildings and make them structurally sound for people to come in. And the hope is that multiple buildings will be available to people or other avenues, uh, you know, whether it be photography or, you know, uh, or paranormal things. You know, with the haunted house, it's brought a lot of exposure, and it's helping. And the more activity brings more money that, that saves a lot of these buildings. And I think, at the end of the day, preserving these buildings is paramount to almost anybody's, uh, you know, agenda. And I think that uh, we're trying to do that. And I think that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I hope that people understand that. And I hope that people give us the time to prove it's, you know, that's what we want to do.